this week I've been driving the all new Ram 1500 TRX. It's an insane truck. You probably already know that. You probably also already know that it has the 702 horsepower supercharged V8 under the hood that's pulled straight from the Hellcat range. You probably know about the 4.5 second zero to 60 time. This thing is wider and taller than the standard 1500. We're gonna dive into all of that through this review. We're gonna do a full walk around, check out the interior, check out that engine under the hood, take it for a drive. But my main focus is with this being such a beast of a truck, how is it to live with day to day, driving it, dropping off kids to school, going downtown and parking, just normal everyday stuff. Is this worth buying for a day to day truck? We're gonna get into all that and much more in this review. So stay with us, let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's start off with the exterior of the TRX. It is only available in a 4x4, duh, and only in a crew cab with the 5 foot 7 inch box. The one we're rocking here is a two tone paint scheme with the red flame clear coat and diamond black crystal pearl coat exterior paint. Those headlights are the LED Smart Beam Intelligent headlamps, and they are integrated into those wider fender flares. Those fender flares are widened eight inches to accommodate the seven strategically placed airflow vents. And just as an example, this vent right here on the side of the fender is a functional vent and goes all the way through the fender and comes out back here for better airflow. We have our big beefy Ram grill, kind of styled after the Rebel grill but you can see that the Ram logo here is hollow to allow air to pass through. This engine needs a lot of air, which brings us up here to the hood. And that hood scoop again is functional and provides up to 50% of all the air going into this engine. You can also see the marker lights here in that hood scoop. These are here for regulation purposes. This truck is so wide. It meets the regulations for commercial vehicles in its width, so it must have extra lights here as well as each corner of the bumper and along the sides and back as well so they're not just putting these here to copy what ford has with the raptor it is a commercial regulation to have these lights but they do look cool and make this thing stand out and that regulation states that any vehicle over 80 inches wide constitutes as a commercial vehicle most trucks are 79.9 inches wide so that they don't surpass that but if you're going to add eight inches four inches on each side to a standard truck, you're gonna surpass that. So this thing does surpass the 80 inch wide track. So as far as the rest of the hood goes, you do have extraction vents here. You have the 6.2 liter supercharged badge on the side of the hood here. We do have the graphics pack with the TRX. And I really do like that the TRX badge is only focused on the driver's side. There's not a complimentary symmetric graphic on the other side. I kind of like the asymmetry of the TRX badge here. And when you're inside looking down the hood, it looks really cool. And pulling back here to the side of the truck, there is a lot going on. You can see that fender flare and vent there in the front. You can see the TRX graphic on the back. You do have big side mirrors with the turn signal integrated. They can also fold in better for parking. They don't automatically fold on lock. You do have to hit the button inside to make them fold but at least they do fold with a button. Those massive tires are 32 inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrain tires developed specifically for the TRX. And they're riding on beadlock capable gloss black 18 inch cast aluminum wheels. They definitely look beefy on this truck and help that stance and that off-roadiness super solid. Also solid is this side rail. It is a bit of a step here, but it also protects the vehicle from uh, rock damage or anything. If you are rolling this thing over some rocks, this will protect you, but it also serves as a bit of a step into the truck as it is a pretty tall truck. And the height also gives you visualization on these Bilstein shocks back here with the TRX and Ram badges on there. You also get lots of underbody skid plates and armor, making sure that no matter what terrain you take this on, the undercarriage is protected. Moving to the back, you have that large Ram badge there on the tailgate. You have the 
TRX badge on the left hand side and the 4x4 badge on the right hand side. This one has a full size spare tire underneath the truck as well as a dual exhaust system with five inch tips and this thing definitely sounds mean. We'll start it up a little bit later in the video but uh, this thing sounds mean if you haven't heard it definitely stick around for that. Overall the ground clearance is 11.8 inches Water treading is 32 inches. The front suspension travel is 13 inches and the rear suspension travel is 14 inches. All right, and with that, let's talk about this tailgate and box. Like I said, it is the five foot seven inch box and that's the only one you can get on the TRX. The tailgate, we already looked at the exterior of it. You do get the backup camera here. It is a soft drop tailgate. You can actually drop it from the key as well. But besides this cover here, there's nothing too fancy back here in the bed of the truck. You've got rails for tie downs. You've got some LED lighting. But again, basic tailgate, basic box, which is just fine with me. All right, and with that, let's... uh do what everybody came here for. Let's check out that engine under the hood. All right, and there's no surprise that under the hood is that 6.2 liter Hemi V8 supercharged. The supercharger itself is 2.4 liters. That's a massive supercharger. This produces 702 horsepower, 650 foot-pounds of torque. Now you might be asking why 702 horsepower and not the same number that the Hellcat gets. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the restricted airflow for this vehicle. So this does have a high performance air induction system, which filters four times as much dirt and debris than the Ford Raptor, all while consuming up to 32.9 liters of air per minute. That supercharger is the twin screw supercharger, which provides near instantaneous torque, has a maximum speed of 14,600 RPM and can regulate boost pressure up to an astonishing 11 PSI. This truck is made to go off-road, so they had to put really good filters for the air so that dust and water and things like that cannot get into the air intake. So even though we do have that big intake on the hood and the open grill, this thing still consumes a lot of air. But 702 horsepower, <laughs> still a beast. All of that's matched up to the Torque Flight 8-speed automatic transmission. And like I said, 0-60 to 60 time in about 4.5 seconds. But there have been some independent journalists and outlets that have gotten this thing down to 3.8 seconds, 0-60 to 60 time, which is insane. But we'll stick with the numbers that Ram says, 4.5. Maybe we'll do a 0-60 to 60 run in this thing. I don't know. What do you think? Also, if you've seen any other videos on the TRX, you probably know about the Easter egg under the hood, under this massive engine cover here. There's another engine cover, but there's also a little graphic of a T-Rex eating a Raptor. Super funny, obviously, but really cool that a manufacturer like Ram will do stuff like that. I don't like it when corporations take themselves too serious that they can't make a little bit of jokes with their products. I think that's pretty cool. What do you guys think? All right, guys, let's uh, stop gawking at the engine and move inside. We'll start off with the rear seats, talk about the interior. We'll move into the front, talk about the tech in this vehicle. Then we'll take it for a drive. All right, so the first thing you should notice about the rear seats here is there's a ton of room. This is the driver position. That's my position. Passenger position is about the same. I have so much room back here and that's not unique to the TRX. That's just Ram in general. This is a big truck. You do have nice materials back here, a nice grab handle. The kids often say they like the grab handles up here more than the grab handles right here, but for off-roading, I think these are probably more sturdy and uh, better than something that you would have up here. You have a nice pull down console back here with two cup holders and a little bit of storage. You have your own AC controls. You have heated 
and cooled seats back here. You have a 115 volt normal house plug. You have two USB type C and two USB type A ports. And all in all, the rear seats are just, it's a nice place to be. You might also be able to see these speakers back here. We'll talk more about the audio system in this thing, but uh, it rocks. And of course, the rear seats are not left out in that. All right, and with that, let's move up to that front seat, take a look at the rest of the interior, some of the tech, then we'll be ready to take it for a drive. All right, guys, so we're here in the front seats of the TRX, and we have the black on black interior with the TRX bucket seats and a few TRX uh, goodies around. So let me pick you guys up and give you a little bit of a tour around this interior. Then we'll turn it on and start looking at the tech. All right, and again, we have these black leather seats with perforated leather, some white stitching, some cloth inserts, and that TRX badge there embroidered in the back of the seat. You do have that TRX badge in the top glove box area here. Obviously, we do have the bottom glove box leather wrap dash with white stitching. We have this gloss black with kind of a stitched pattern for our trim, as well as some brushed aluminum. And you can probably see that Harman Kardon speaker there in the door. This does have the 19 speaker Harman Kardon premium audio system. We do have a push button start, so let's turn it on and uh, get some airflow up in here. And of course, the first thing you notice is that 12 inch touchscreen display with Uconnect 4C with navigation. Now, if you haven't seen this display in any of the Rams before, it is a massive display, but it's really nice. And I like the way that um, the, the Uconnect system will split up the screen in between two separate things, or you can have the full screen here. It's just a nice clean setup. And I much prefer this over having actually two different screens doing two different things. Just the one screen, big screen setup is really nice. Of course, you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integrations, which is great, but it doesn't have the wireless Apple CarPlay, which is a little bit of a bummer, especially since we do have a wireless charging pad we'll get to in just a second. Above that screen is this little top dash area with the RAM badge here, Harman Kardon speaker back there, but you also get a charging port up here, which is a little bit unique and uh, is really great if you're running a GoPro on the windshield or anything else that needs to plug in. You don't have to run your cord all the way down. You just plug it in right here. Pretty cool. And along with the screen, you do have some physical buttons on either side, physical knobs here. And towards the bottom of that screen are a few more physical buttons here and six auxiliary buttons if you're adding auxiliary accessories. You have your trailer management control here. Further down, you do have two USB type C and two USB type A ports, as well as an auxiliary port. Very cool. You got a little shelf here to throw things. And of course, if you take that wire out of the way, there is a little shelf here that you can pop your phone into. It'll hold your phone in place, which is great, but it'll also wirelessly charge that phone, which is awesome. If you don't have wireless charging, it does have these little grooves here, so you can actually have your phone plugged in and still charging and sitting in this little shelf. Quite frankly, I'm definitely ready for more manufacturers to do more things like this. Having a nice, secure place to put your phone while you're driving is really great, and Ram has done this in one of the most perfect ways that you can do it. My only slight gripe here is that uh, you really have to get that phone positioned almost perfectly for that wireless charger. If you're kind of just fumbling around and you put it off to the side, or you don't get it in there perfectly, uh, it will not charge. But it does come up with a red light here to indicate that it is not charging. So when you do put it down there, you can take a peek and know if it is charging or not by the blue or red light. Moving further back, you got the two cup holders. You also have a traditional shifter. Now, if you know anything about the other Ram trucks, they all have the dial shifter and it is right here. But here in this one, we have all of these controls, which we'll touch on in just a second. So in this one, we actually get a traditional gear shift, which is nice. Further back, we have our console, leather and suede, very comfortable to rest your arm. You also can see we have this special plaque here for the TRX. And this does show info on the motor, 
horsepower rating, where it was built, supercharger, the PSI from the boost, and the VIN number. Pretty cool and something that reminds you that this is a special truck. Open up that lid. The top here is just a small shelf that's nice. And this little cubby right here, I'm not sure what the main intent for it is, but if you have a GoPro, it fits perfectly right in this little shelf. Again, who knows if that's the main intent, but uh, it ends up working out if you want to throw a GoPro in here and just have it stored. You can also see that you get a USB charging port back here, so you can throw something in here and charge it. But that's just the top. Lift up the bottom one, and you got a row of uh, coin holders here. But also one of the cool quirks that you get in this TRX that's not in other RAMs is this little diagram here on the bottom of the console with the ruler. They say this is uh, for work purposes. I don't buy that. I think it just looks cool, which it does, but uh, it's there. Next cool little corker Easter egg in this uh, console is this little graphic of the actual truck, a T-Rex and a Velociraptor all to scale. Just to let you know how serious this T-Rex is, about uh, beating the Raptor. Next up, we do have a digital rear view mirror. So you can flip it and see the actual mirror itself or flip it again and see the view out of the rear view camera. Definitely can come in handy there, especially if you've got a big tire sitting in the back, covering your back windshield, which you can get as an option in this truck. Moving along to the steering wheel, it is suede and perforated leather. It is a flat bottom steering wheel, which makes it easier to get in and out and gives it that uh, kind of sporty profile. You do get some of your traditional buttons here on the steering wheel. You get these aluminum paddle shifters, which looks like one long paddle shifter here. But if you look around the back, it is one large thing, but it is split in the center for your buttons on the back of the steering wheel, just like all the uh, FCA steering wheels have. This one's for volume, changing your channel and stuff is on the other side. I really like these buttons and it's a good utilization of the room instead of having just more buttons in the front. I also like this gloss black Ram logo here on the steering wheel instead of a bright chrome one. Looks really nice. Back behind that steering wheel is your two analog gauges along with a digital driver information display. And you can toggle through a lot of different things from vehicle info to some off-roading information to your performance information, your driver assist features, fuel economy, we'll talk more about in a minute, trip info, trailer and tow, audio, messages, some settings, diagnostic, speed warning, and a speedometer. We also do have a head-up display, which is a nice system, shows a lot of different information and is pretty bright, doesn't come through on the video that well, but uh, it is a nice head-up display. And while we're looking out that front windshield, take a look at the hood from the driver's perspective. Like I said, you get that TRX graphic there, you can see your extraction vents, you can see the engine badge right there. Just a beefy look. All right, next up, let's finally talk about some of this right here. So we have all of our four-wheel drive settings here, including a four-wheel auto, an axle lock, four-wheel high and four-wheel low. You also have a launch button with this cool drag strip logo here. You can also switch your modes, your driving modes here, and you can click the TRX button there for your performance pages. And those performance pages consist of your drive modes where you can switch from snow, tow, sport, custom, mud and sand, rock and Baja. You have your performance pages here, which take a second to load in, but you have a dashboard of gauges. You have timers here. You have some more gauges, your G-Force, engine dyno, and vehicle dynamics. All right, well, we have a lot more we can talk about, but let's uh, get this thing out on the road. Let's start driving it, listen to that engine, listen to the exhaust notes, and talk about some of the drive modes, talk about uh, how it is to drive day to day, while we think about living with it day to day, then we'll talk about the price and what competition it has. And then we'll start wrapping up the video there. So let's keep going.
All right, so the first thing that we can touch on on driving is the drive modes. You do have eight drive modes plus a valet mode. Those modes include a sport mode, the tow mode, a snow mode, the auto mode, which we're in right now, a custom mode, which you can custom set up, mud and sand, rock, and Baja. Let's change it into sport mode really quickly. I think that's probably one of the things that people will be the most interested in. We've got our transmission in sport, paddle shifters on, stability control in sport, suspension in sport, and steering in sport. Let's just hit an acceleration test. Maybe a zero to 60. Ready, set, go. Sixty. Yeah, it gets up and goes. We'll have to see what the official time on that run was. The thing is that this thing is a fast truck. It feels like a fast truck, but if you're comparing it to driving the Hellcat Charger or Challenger, it doesn't feel like that same 700 horsepower. And a lot of that comes down to just being in a bigger vehicle, less uh, more isolated from the road, but it is still an extremely, extremely quick truck. <laughs> and that sound, the exhaust, the supercharger, you can't get enough of that. You can't be a car fan and not just love hearing that. Let's throw it back into auto mode here and talk a bit about the fuel economy now. If you're driving the TRX and you're worried about fuel economy, uh, you're doing it wrong. This is definitely not the most economic vehicle at all, and it's not trying to be. I didn't even look up what the official numbers were on this from the EPA, but uh, during the full week that I've had it, I'm averaging 10.4 miles to the gallon, which is pretty absurd, but uh, that engine is absurd. Pretty sure that in the Raptor when we had that, we averaged about 17 to 18 miles per gallon for the week that we had the Raptor. This thing at 10.4 miles to the gallon might be a new low for me. Of course, we didn't use it, but this does have the launch control. This is the first ever truck from Ram to have launch control in it. And go figure, you probably wouldn't need that in many other trucks, but uh, you could definitely take advantage of it in this truck. Again, we do have that head-up display, which is great for driving. You don't have to take your eyes off the road to look down and see your speed or anything. It's always right there in front of you, which when you're going really quickly down the road, uh, that's a good thing. You have some driver assist features in here. I basically didn't use them throughout the week. They are great to have, and I have used them in other Ram reviews, but uh, for the TRX, who wants it to assist you in driving whenever you could be doing the driving? That's really not even pushing the throttle all the way down. That's probably maybe about half throttle, just cause on this back country road, it'd be ridiculous having too much fun, which is why I need to get gas again. So let's talk quickly about living with this thing day to day uh, and driving it day to day. We've driven it in a lot of different circumstances. We've had it downtown Dallas, parking downtown Dallas, uh, driving in heavy traffic on the highway. We've had it out on back country roads. We've had it on twisty roads going pretty quick. We did a little bit of Baja stylish off-roading, nothing too serious and Obviously, it's a very capable truck. They did a lot of things right with this thing. But my initial thought was, why would you want to live with the 702 horsepower truck day to day? But besides the fuel economy, this thing is easy to live with day to day. It's basically a normal truck. It is wider, so you have to take that into consideration, obviously. But it is an easy truck to drive, an easy truck to maneuver. That power is there, but it never feels overwhelming. You can really get on it and push it and 
it's amazing. But in day-to-day -day scenarios on the highway, entering the highway, you never feel like you're gonna lose control because of how much power it has. So if you are considering buying one of these things, you've got the money to throw at it. You want a truck that can do Baja with 700 horsepower under the hood that sounds insane, that has a nice interior, has good tech, and you worry about how it feels daily driving, I would say don't worry, it is a really great day-to-day -day truck. Again, your two biggest things are fuel economy and it's just a bigger, wider body that you have to be conscious of. Do I love the truck and consider buying it for myself? Uh, yes, I do love the truck. No, I don't make the kind of money that's necessary to buy a truck like this. But it was a joy to have during this week, so I would definitely recommend it if you are in the market, if you're looking and you have the kind of money it takes to spend on a truck like this. This is also a very popular truck. Obviously, we're in Texas. People know about this thing. People are into trucks and truck culture. But I've been surprised at just how many people have seen the TRX commercial or just know about this truck because of other advertisement or blogs or videos. So many more people came up to me than I thought would asking about the truck, asking to jump in it and look at it, asking me for to kick it on and hear the exhaust. You get a ton of thumbs up as you drive by people. You get a lot of people twisting their heads to check it out as you drive by. It's definitely not subdued, especially with this graphic package. People know what this thing is and at least here in Texas, they like it. All right guys, well I was gonna take you guys off road and check out this little trail right here. It's just a tractor trail. Um, and gets really nasty when it rains. It's been raining for three days straight, so I'm sure it's pretty bad, but it is closed off, so you can't go through it. I have no doubt that this TRX could make it through there with no issues. We did drive this thing off-road at the Off-Road Invitational last year when this first came out, so we do have a video out on that. I'll put a couple of clips from that uh, into this video just so you can see, but if you're interested in seeing more of this thing just purely off-road, Leave me a comment down below and I'll try to make that happen. But uh, we can't go, even though again, I have no doubt that this would make it through it. We can't get out there. So we're gonna get back out on the road. All right, guys, and with that, we've had enough fun driving this thing and uh, romping on it. Let's find a place to pull back over and we'll start talking about the price of this thing, the competition, some of my final thoughts, and we'll wrap the video up there. All right, and before we wrap the video up, let's talk about the price and competition here. Starting off with the base price of a TRX, which base is just over $70,000. This one here with a few options is just about $90,000, and it can go up from there. Is this truck worth the $90,000? Well, <laughs> probably yes. It's got the monster engine under the hood. It's got all the off-roadiness that you would ever need from a truck. If you're doing anything more serious off-roading, they have the power wagon, but also they have the Jeep lineup as well. So you could definitely be looking at a Wrangler. But for what this is meant for, which is more of a Baja style off-roading, going very fast over some crazy terrain, the only thing that really competes with this and gets close to touching it is the Raptor. And Ram is letting you know that with the T-Rex eating the Raptor under the hood and the uh, T-Rex and the Raptor in the console. They want you to know that the Raptor is their competition and that they are here to destroy it, which the current Raptor, this thing basically does destroy it. There, there are talks about the Raptor getting a V8 now to more compete with the power numbers that you're getting out of this truck. And don't get me wrong, I love the Raptor. I've loved it for a long time. That twin turbo EcoBoost V6 under the hood is a great engine, but it doesn't sound as good as this thing for sure and definitely doesn't come close to the power output. 
refinement and interior, I would say that they are about on par. Tech wise, the Ford might be behind a little bit there in tech, but just because this thing is newer, once they come out with the new Raptor, with the new platform, I'm sure that gap will be closed as well. So it could just come down to preference on the design that you like the best. Uh, and if you really want this extreme power, which I would definitely encourage. But with that, let's jump out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, and with that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're into automotive reviews, trucks, cars, SUVs, family, luxury, whatever, please subscribe to the channel. We put out a new review every week. Hit us up in the comments. Let me know what you think about the TRX. Let me know if I made any mistakes during this review. I often do. Also go check out TXGarage.com if you haven't already. We've got a lot of great written reviews as well as news and event coverage from a lot of different contributors there. But with that guys, that's all the time I have for this review. A lot more I could have probably touched on, but uh, thanks for watching.